Sunday school. I'm the one who is also going to lead service. Where are you people? He didn't know that he was sending a dagger to my soul. I couldn't stand up from that uh, dust. I was in the dust. I said, Lord, here am I. Here am I. I will be here. I will be here. I will be here. This is where I'm going to spend the rest of my days here. And from that evening, I will come every Sunday. I'm there Saturday. I'm there Tuesday. I'm there on Wednesday. I'm going from house to house. There are people in this meeting that are my full-time staff. And it was in that dusty church that God arrested them and they became born again. Brother Dedibu, are you, are you here today? Stand up, stand up, please. Stand up. Where is uh, Brother Rufus? Where is uh, Dorcas? Several people. That's it. I had to leave a place where the work of God will not be made manifest. I attended a powerful church where I was not needed. I contributed. It was only for, for mental analysis. But here are people that even when I just speak for 30 minutes, I saw the work of God in their lives. I saw their souls changed. I saw them going, growing. I saw them rejoicing that the word of God has come. They will ask questions, but their questions are genuine questions from the heart because they are hungry. Men of God sitting here, the day that has opened to you, I want to tell you, it's for the work of God to be what? Made manifest. That's number one. Number two, in him. There are specific people, specific places where the work of God will be made manifest. And there are other places where whatever you do, it will be consumed and nothing will show. I have spoken to the politician. I have said, sir, many, many of your friends and colleagues, they can just walk in and say, Governor, find something for me. You could find something for them in millions. You are sowing on the ground with brass. It will not show. In fact, they will stand against you tomorrow because they, they are only looking for the biggest bidder. Get to the grassroots. Sir. Get to where one small borehole you do. Hey! As those villagers are drinking your water, they say, Father, bless Shante. Bless Shante. We are drinking his water. May you bless him. May you increase him. Bless him. Go to where men are in need and go to where good works will show. I needed to take that decision for my life. After many, many years, they invited me to that church to come and preach. It was the same set of people I met. The same set of people. The only thing is that they have grown a little older. Their attitude has not changed. As I came, I finished speaking. Powerful message. That when I preach it anywhere else, people are coming out in tears. I preach to them. <laughs> they just came and say, Braguile, that's a good word. That's a good word. And they sat down to analyze it intellectually I said God deliver me from wasting my seed where it will not show how can I spend five days 
and all they are doing is like, yeah. when I gave altar call for people to come out I thought they would be excited that people are coming out they said well Bragbile no we don't want people to be emotional in this church you see these are respectable people uh, even if you are going to give altar call you just tell them that anybody that have a question it should come and then make inquiry after I said uh -huh. uh -huh. anytime I see their invitation I just put it I said put it aside put it aside no how will I invest my day where it will not show I'm not looking for show are you hearing me I'm looking for results I'm looking for results For me to locate here, we had to discuss with God, Lord, why do you want me here? I was doing things in Ibadan before. God said, yes, you can be doing things there. But that's not the place where my work will be made manifest in your life. When you locate where my works will be made manifest in you, men will come for it. They will come to see it. You are here today. You are here today. And you are not only here from Nigeria, they are here from, from different nations. More than 22 nations are here. You need to find out. Where will the good works of God in your life be made manifest? In whom will it be made manifest? Don't squander your opportunities. Don't sow your seed on ordinary brass. It will make you appear as if you are not a hard worker. There are many, many genuine leaders and I appreciate many governors, many leaders they were sincere, sincere. I have had the opportunity of moving near several of them and I know that they want to do well. They determined to do well. But they did not locate where the works, in whom the works will be made manifest. They walked where there will be no manifestation. They walked in those who swallow and not produce. Their appetite is too large. Give them 10 million. They will not even say thank you for more than two times. They say, well, thank you for that, but you know that the matter is about 50 million, so try more. Take 10 million to a community in the village. What will happen, sir? It will show. And for 10 years, they will be dancing. May God guide you aright. Would you like to pray on this before I go on? Say, Father, don't let me sow my day where it will not show. Can you pray like that? Don't let me invest my tenure where it will not show. Don't let me labor where it will not manifest deliver me from putting my precious seeds on grounds that only swallows and never produces pray that your anointing will not be misapplied pray that your grace will not be misapplied pray that the day that God has opened to you the time God has given you to serve him, the work that God has given you to do, you will not be doing it in a wrong place. Jesus has to know in whom the works of God to be made manifest. Where should it be made manifest? What should I do? And the work of God will be made manifest. Hallelujah. Father, 
I pray for my brothers and sisters this morning that you will lend them wisdom. A day is breaking up on our lives. Don't let us enter into wrong pockets. Lord, some of us will regret already that we had the opportunity to have blessed millions. But we found ourselves pocketed by some few individuals. Wicked individuals that didn't allow us to have space to do what we we'll have shown to the people. And we have now been treated as if we were we, we embezzled money. And we didn't embezzle. It's just that we did not know where to put in our resources. Please, Lord, guide us henceforth. Give us a second chance. And when you bring us up again, we will do the right thing in the name of Jesus Christ. Can we go on? Can I go on? All right. Now, follow me to verse 4. Verse 4 says, I must walk the works of him that sent me. Why it is day, the night cometh when no man can walk. For the sake of the space that we are walking with this afternoon, I'm going to, I don't think I can presume to deal with the entire verse 4 sufficiently this afternoon. So I'm going to ask you to allow me to do a part of it when we come back in the night. If the Lord will lead us further, I will want to press it on. There are several wo I mean words that I should deal with. The first word is I. I. Did you see the word I there? Eh? Other versions use the word we. But my trouble is that I didn't see the basis of changing that personal pronoun to inclusive pronoun. Praise the Lord. When he say we, I don't know who and who. That's why I always return back to my King James. What did King James say? The next word I want to highlight before I go, you will notice the word I, me. I must walk the works of him that sent me. And please permit me to be very free with you. For you to succeed with your day, you must take personal responsibility. What I say you must do? You must take personal responsibility. Personal responsibility for what you are doing. I saw Jesus taking personal responsibility. I must walk the works of him that sent me. Oh God, that to me is a very strong matter. I, not me and you. I realize that when God opens a way for you, even though many people may be involved, you, at the end of the day, will be held, what? Responsible. When we will go before God, even in heaven, you, and you alone, will be held responsible for the grace that God gave you. But even in politics, 
what I want my excellency to know about her is that at the end of the day you we have to bear responsibility for what you did there are many advisors there are party organs there are political fathers there are godfathers who may not allow you to perform but when you have not performed whom do you think the rubber state will blame you sometimes you need to recognize that this is your tenure there are no two governors in Taraba State today who is the governor in Taraba State eh? that's my governor here whatever you did not do that you should have done. Nobody will sympathize. They will all the same say, he didn't do it. For me, standing to preach the word of God, I take personal responsibility for what God has said should be done. Many brothers that I'm working with, many sisters that are good people, but I know when the whole matter will conclude and something goes wrong, do you know what people will be saying? They say, Brother Billy, Brother Billy, Brother Billy. I say, I don't know about it, or they say, You should have known. Ah. It's happening behind me. I don't know anything. They didn't tell me. Say, what? No, 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 no. You know. For you to maximize your day at whatever level, as a principal of a secondary school, who must take responsibility? You. As a medical doctor in charge of the Federal Medical Center where God has made you, you must take responsibility. Now he said, I must walk the works of him that did what? That sent me. That's the second point. You must continuously be aware of who sent you. Eh? In the local Yoruba proverb, it says, "Eni tona nini she? Laafa bofu. The man who sent you is the one you report to. Am I right? And the second way of putting the proverb said, "He who sent you an errand is the one you fear. You don't fear to whom you deliver it." When you are sent an errand, you fear the man that sent you and not the person you are delivering to. Because the authority of he who sent you is the authority in which you are operating. And it is he who sent you that demands your report. Those who did not send you they are not entitled to your report. Brothers and sisters, can I ask you, are you aware of who sent you? Paul kept saying, I know whom I have believed. Did he say something like that? He kept saying, a dispensation of the gospel had been committed to me. And as a result of that, woe is me if I preach not the gospel. What is causing that? He took personal responsibility 
because he knows who sent him. And if you go and read 1 Corinthians 5 or 2 Corinthians 5, he said, we must all appear before God to give account of what we did. For your day to be made manifest and for you to find fullness, I want to challenge you this morning, my brother, my sister, take what kind of responsibility? Personal responsibility. I must walk the works of him that sent me. You have just been appointed as a commissioner. You have just been given a mandate as a dean in the faculty. You have just been given an opportunity to lead a particular government department. Do you think it would be all right for you to say, well, I actually wanted that thing to be done. It's just because uh, my clerk uh, diverted the funds. We did accept. We did accept. Take responsibility for what God has brought you into this day to fulfill. I was excited to note Jesus saying, I must walk the works of him that sent me. Now, what is the second component of that passage? Apart from taking responsibility, personal responsibility. And I will be praying this morning for courage to take responsibility. The truth of the matter is that do what you know to do. When you have done it, if men blame you for what you did, it's wonderful. But it's more painful for you to accept blame for what you did not do. Am I correct? It's more dilapidating to a man to face Shame for what he never did. It were better to suffer for what I did. But what's the second component? I must walk the works of him. We will be meeting this little phrase as you go about looking at the word of God. For example, somebody should quickly look at John chapter 4. You will come across that little phrase again. For verse 34. Can somebody read? Yes, sir. My meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish what? His work. It is important to know that opportunities that God gives us when our day breaks is not to do our own things. It's to do what? His work. Is to do his work. I must work the works of him that did what? That sent me. I must do the works of him that sent me. It's painful that many, 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 many servants of God who are supposedly anointed, they are using the anointing to do other works or their own works rather than 
his work. It will never be right if it is not his work. It will be a misapplication of resources if it is not applied to do the work of him that sent me. So the next question to deal with genuinely is, Lord, what are you raising me up to do for you? What is the work God wants me to do? For young people, for aspiring politicians, what is it that God has put in your heart to do for your people? What is it that God has defined to you and said, this is my work that I'm raising you to do for me? May I say that you may not be able to do all works. And it is not necessary to do all works. But there is something that God has called his own work for which he has sent you. Jesus said, I must walk the works of him that sent me. As men and women that want to see the fullness of the day that God has opened to us, can we find out what is this day opening unto me for? These questions, I have continued to ask it for my own life. And maybe by the time I'm concluding these messages tomorrow, God will have helped us to define what is this reviver supposed to bring to the kingdom of God. If an anointing fell on you in the course of this meeting, it must come with a definition, a defined assignment. If God is coming to empower you, he's empowering you for a specific assignment. And that's what to do. I was very excited in, in, in recent years when I discovered that many, many of our political leaders, whenever they come, this, this was just happening recently. And all of them are now talking about three-point agenda, seven-point agenda, 13-point agenda, 15-point agenda. I was excited about that. Do you know why I'm excited? At least they are, they are giving us bullet points. Point one, point two, point three, point four, point five, point six, point seven agenda. I thought that that is brilliant. And I wish to congratulate men who are saying, let's set agenda. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The only problem I found is that an agenda is not realistic if there is no evaluation. Am I correct? Once you set an agenda, the corollary of that agenda is that there must be an evaluation system. They must go side by side. And there is no agenda that is valid if it is not time defined. Am I communicating? Eh? You cannot say I have an agenda and it is not time defined. 